The principle of automatic writing relies upon surrender of the certain. On only empty mind can foster the truth of this art. Blessings bestowed unreservedly by liberated intellect redeem the fallen. Souls longing for holistic promise and faithful intercourse with the universe may rely upon words without bounds. It is unkind to language to treat words as slaves. We do not own the power they bring to life, for the muses themselves are the arbiters of ritual meaning. Best we not resist this fate. Only knowledge itself holds the key to our purpose as instruments directed from above. We are branches on the tree of life, not its roots, and yet all that falls from her boughs nourishes us. That was actually an automatic writing exercise that proved the worth of automatic writing because I had no idea what I was doing other than writing a prose poem. And a prose poem is maybe a little easier than a poem poem because you can pretend that you're doing something else. You can pretend that you're writing a composition of an ordinary sort. But what you're really striving to do is get to those root statements like, for the muses themselves are the arbiters of ritual meaning. What does ritual meaning mean? Well, it talks about how we always are trying to make sense. We as intellectuals want to make sense and be understood, you know? But there is no way that that is what art is all about. There is no way that art has anything to do with wanting to be received by the people you're creating for because you're not really creating for them. To be perfectly honest, you're creating for the sake of creating. You're creating for the wonder of that moment that you're in with spirits guiding hand with the muses input you are gaining a new appreciation for your own place in the creative matrix of life and so be honest artists of the world you're not in it certainly not in it solely for those who are out there to consume your art you are in it for the addictive flavor of creativity itself, of creation. Okay, we've spoken on this elsewhere. The work of the artist is to get out of the way so that more and more of that transpersonal self that is all art flowing through every pore of the universe can become manifest through us. And when you do automatic writing, which is what poetry is as well, in my opinion, you try to take only a tiny kernel of thought to start the ball rolling, and then it, the snowball grows from just that little kernel. But to say that you are doing all the creating, I don't know, that's questionable. This is called monkey mind. Wisdom rests upon chaos. Truth is born an orphan. Fathomless is the matrix. Her power non-relativistic. Beyond the daydream's rainfall, within the timeless void, a silent god smiles plaintive, forever unperturbed. Our own horizon blemished by habitual linearity. Not simply random thought but rigid, ragged ratiocination. You can come closer if you're going to play that softly, Ricardo. But the point is this. Spirit is a fundamental principle. The fundamental principle, meaning the animating force, okay? Call it time, call it life, call it God, call it spirit, call it goddess, call it the matrix, call it the dragon the dragon. Call it the ether. Call it the zero point vacuum fluctuations. Call it chi, ashe, 
whatever else, you know, prana, uh, the animating forces of the universe are spirits, limbs, and tentacles, and tendrils. The sensibilities of the divine are the fibers of the universe itself. The sensibilities of the divine are the fibers of the universe itself. That was poetry, okay? Where did that come from? My mind being open like a vessel to whatever pours in from those fibers. From the rain of the daydream rather than the night dream. You know, night dreams are also creative musings of spirit. We call it the unconscious, but that's just a technical term. It's really the music of the spheres played to us in our astral travels. And we're working out tensions in our being and we're gaining new perspective on the things that preoccupy us or uh, perhaps we're tuning into prophetic realities beyond this present, present moment. Maybe we can conclude with one more poem. This is called Reality Constructs. Perfection knows no prejudice. Greatness is not attained. Only the wild are possessed from within. Guided amazement. Reality constructs a fail-safe doom for all token sentiments. No reason can endure the pure matrix of sentience. We wake each moment into future being like sands flowing backward through a wormhole of wonder. A wormhole of wonder. That's the future. The future is staring before us like a great light which we are the deers in, or the deer in the headlights, you know, um, receiving this blazing, boundless luminosity from the future. And only the artist can go beyond the blindness. Only the artist can feel that there's something in that pure light to, to grasp before anyone else grasps that future truth that we are.